Hi guys, my name is Monty. My Instagram handle is Move with Monty, and today I'm going to be taking you through 10 killer core exercises. So make sure that you're in fitness gear, make sure you've got a bottle of water and a mat ready. I'm just going to wait for a few moments for people to join and then we will get cracking. Not all of these exercises are going to be easy. There are going to be some advanced ones, there are going to be some difficult ones. I'll do my best to uh, throw in some regressions and some progressions as well so that you guys have all got something to take away from this. Some of these exercises are going to be very difficult. Don't worry if you can't do them, that's fine. As long as you've built some sort of awareness that these, ex uh, th these exercises exist, then that's great too. Guys, follow along as best you can. We're gonna get started in just a minute. All of this is gonna be floor based. You're not gonna need any equipment, body weight only. We're gonna be targeting the front side of your core also the sides and the back side as well. So we're gonna go, go for a very 360 approach. All right guys, 10 seconds and then we are gonna get started. This is 10 killer core exercises with me, Monty. My Instagram handle is Move with Monty. Don't forget to check me out. All right guys, we are gonna get started. We're gonna start with a V-sit. You guys are probably familiar with this. You're gonna start by sitting down on your bum this way. I don't want you upright, so I want your chest behind your hips. So instead of having your chest on top of your hips, the further you lean back, the harder it's gonna be here. We're really targeting the front of the core, the hips as well. Now you guys can decide to lift the legs if you want to. This is a little bit harder. I wouldn't roll onto your lower back because then you lose uh, the kind of positioning and you lose the, the engagement of that exercise and it becomes something different. So guys, you can either have your heels down if you want to, and you can make it easier by leaning forward. You can make it more difficult by leaning back. If you want to make it more difficult still, then just lift your legs up. Now this is the V-sit position. I've made a pretty shallow V with my thighs. If you want to make it harder still, point your legs. If you want to make it harder still, hands off. Okay, so let's go through them all one more time. You're going to start in this seated position. Your heels are flat to the floor. You're going to lean your chest back so that it's behind your hips. If you want to make it harder, lean back further, make it easier, come up further. If you want to make it harder still, lift the feet. This is going to be harder from a balance perspective. I'm balancing right on the kind of top part of my bum. And then if I want to make it harder still, I point my legs. If I want to make it harder still, I lift my arms up and overhead. And I'm holding that V-sit position. Okay, guys? So that is your exercise one, the V-sit. And there's a few different progressions and regressions that you can go through there. The next one is a Russian twist. Now there's loads of different ways that you can do this. I'm gonna show you my personal um, favorite. So we're in a similar position to the V-sit. I'm gonna have my hands just in front of my chest and then I'm gonna rotate to the side and then come back this side. Notice that I'm actually twisting my spine. I'm trying to turn my chest bone, my sternum to the side. Okay, so I'm not just chopping my arms this way. This can sometimes be a Russian twist. Some people would say that it's not. I'm inclined to agree with them. I think Russian twist should have an actual twist in it as well. So guys, like I said, uh, with the visa, if you wanna make this harder, you can lift your legs. And again, that's gonna make it harder for the balance. It's really gonna make your core work hard. It's gonna make it much more difficult. If you guys want to, you can grab a kettlebell and then you can start to make it loaded. So if you don't have any equipment, don't worry. I know that this is, I said that this would be a body weight um, workout. But if you do have some equipment, you can throw in some weighted Russian twists. Now guys, these are all pretty, but you've probably seen a lot of these before, and that's fine. Um, there's gonna be some more exotic exercises in here later on. I just wanted to start at you off with something that you might find a bit more familiar. We're gonna go into some back extensions now. So the back extensions, you're lying down on your belly. And then from here, we're gonna keep my legs flat. I'm gonna lie down, and then gonna lift everything off the floor. I'm gonna lie everything down and lift everything up. So it's almost like a cobra lifting his head up and spreading, his, uh, and spreading himself. In a similar way, you're gonna lift your upper back and spread your shoulders and open everything up. If you wanna make this a bit harder, you need more weight on this side of your body. So less weight down towards your feet, more weight up towards your head. And we can do that by bringing our arms slightly out overhead. And then in a similar way, I'm gonna lift my body and lift my arms at the same time. You guys should be feeling work in your lower back. That's not a bad thing, that's exactly what we're targeting. You might feel work in your mid back, in your upper back, 
and also in your shoulders as well. So there you've got the back extensions. So, so far we've covered the front of the core with the first two exercises with a little bit of twisting in there as well. We've now covered the opposite where we're working on back extension, trying to strengthen up those muscles that run up either side of our spine. We're gonna move on to a dish hold now. So this one again is gonna be targeting the front of the core. And again, we're gonna start with some regressions to begin with. So the basic dish um, is gonna be, is gonna start here and it's gonna progress out to this position. Okay, but we're gonna start here where it's a bit easier. I'm gonna begin with holding my knees and trying to press my lower back into the floor. I want you to imagine that you've got a bottle of ketchup underneath your lower back and you're trying to press all of the ketchup out of it by pressing your lower back into the floor. And then what you should feel is your core light up and work much, much harder. As you become more familiar with that, you can extend one arm. If that's too easy, then extend the other arm and then start to extend both arms. If that becomes too easy, then we're gonna switch it up. So we're gonna extend one leg instead. I'm not letting my lower back arch. I'm trying to keep it pressed into the floor and I'm not letting my foot touch the floor either. And then extending the other leg and I'm practicing exactly the same thing. So it's very similar to a dead bug here. But what we're gonna to start to do now is extend the arms and legs, keeping the lower back pressed to the floor. And we're gonna hold this position here. So you've got different levels of dish. You've got this position here, where you're making a, a dish shape with your body or a banana shape or like a crescent moon. You're then gonna extend the arms to progress it, then extend the legs and then extend the arms with them as well. And what you'll find is that with each of those progressions, there's more demand uh, on the front of your core to keep that lower back pressed to the floor. So we are not trying to keep a neutral spine here. What we are trying to do is round out the lower back and we're gonna shorten all of the muscles on the front of our body by pressing into that lower back area. It's gonna be really, really demanding on the core. We're gonna move into a V-sit oblique crunch. Now I said that we're gonna do some more exotic exercises. This is one of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend a V-sit with an oblique crunch. So I'm gonna rock onto my side so I'm no longer sitting on both butt cheeks. I'm on one butt cheek, okay? From that position, from sitting on that one bum cheek, I'm gonna extend everything out, lean away from my legs, my legs are gonna move away from my body, and I'm gonna crunch up. But I'm not all the way on my side, that would be me here in this position. I'm just on one butt cheek, so I'm halfway between seated on both, on my side. So I'm right in between the both. I'm gonna lean away, I'm gonna crunch up. You can see I'm using my hand for a little bit of balance, that can help can also help take a little bit of the load off the core. If you wanna make it really hard, then do it with no hands whatsoever. And that is really, really tough. And what you should be feeling is work on the front side of your body. So not perfectly on the side, not perfectly in the middle, but right there. So you want this part of your body, that 45 degree angle pointing towards the ceiling. You're then gonna extend and then crunch, extend, and crunch with that knee tuck. So that's what we're going for there. I'm gonna go through that one more time from a different angle. So I'm gonna go into this position here. I'm gonna tilt onto one side this way. I'm gonna extend my legs, lean away from it, and then gonna crunch back up. Notice how I don't center. Notice how I don't fall to my side. I'm staying on this point here. If the balance is a problem, just put your hands down and use them for a little bit of support. I can promise you, if you do enough of those, it is gonna absolutely tear up your core. It is a very, very difficult exercise. The next exercise, we're gonna go back to targeting the back muscles. So we're gonna to go to the posterior chain and we're gonna do some reverse leg raises. So instead of lifting my chest this time, I'm gonna lift my legs. I'm gonna keep my body flat. And then my objective is to lift my legs. And what I should be feeling is working my lower back, work in my hamstrings and work in my glutes. If I wanna make that really hard, and again, this is where some of that exotic exercise comes back in, we're gonna put the hands down this way and I'm actually gonna tip forward all the way onto my chest. So I'm actually lifting my pelvis, my hips, off the floor. So level one, you're just lifting the legs. If, uh, if that's still too difficult, just lift one leg at a time. So this can be useful some for some of the, your more deconditioned clients. For ones that uh, need a lot more stimulus, 
then you can put the hands down by the sides and rock forward and lift the pelvis off the floor. So all of my weight goes from my belly button here all the way into my chest. That's a very, very difficult exercise. It's certainly not for the faint hearted. So level one, pre-level one in fact, you've got single leg reverse leg raises. You've then got both legs moving up at the same time. You should feel hamstrings, you should feel glutes, but more than anything, you should be feeling your lower back. This exercise does target your lower back, it's designed to. The third level of that, or the much kind of more advanced level of that, is where you're actually lifting your belly button and your pelvis off of the floor so that all of your weight is in your chest. I'll demonstrate that one more time. So you've got single leg lifts here. You've got double leg lifts. And then you've got that really advanced one where you're rocking forward into your chest, lifting your hips, your pelvis and belly button off of the floor. It's much more advanced. It's very, very difficult. The next exercise, again, is another difficult exercise. Don't worry if you can't do it, it's totally fine. What I'd rather you do is make the effort to do it. It's not necessarily important that you complete the exercise, but it's more about the effort that you put into it. Because that effort will accumulate over time and you'll actually be able to do it eventually if you can't do it right now. So we're gonna do an L sit. So um, a more basic level is just where you're putting your hands either side of your hips and lifting your bum off the floor. Okay? Now that might be enough. If that's difficult enough, then that's fine. Keep training that until it becomes easy, then you can progress. The next level is where you lift one leg off the floor as well as lifting your bum. So you're lifting one leg off the floor and then back down. Try the other leg. And that should put a bit more demand on your core, on your hip flexors, and on your quadriceps. I'll show you from the front. So I'm here, level one. I'm just lifting my hips off the floor. My feet are still in contact. The next bit is where I'm lifting one leg. That's gonna dial it up a little bit. Switch to the other side. And then the final one, the full L sit, is where your legs and your bum lift off the floor. This is difficult. Don't worry if you can't do it right now. It's more about the effort towards it because eventually, like I said, that effort will accumulate and you'll be able to do it eventually, okay? You'll adapt and get stronger. So the final Elsa is here. Okay? So your bottom and your legs lift off the floor, making that full L sit. I'll show you from the front. Same again. Hands are gonna press into the floor. I'm gonna round out my chest. I'm gonna engage my core, lift everything off the floor. Okay, there's another more gymnastic style core exercise. We're gonna move into um, one of Cristiano Ronaldo's favorite core exercise. We're gonna do a high crunch. I'm sure that he's got another name for it, but that's what I, that's what I felt like it was. Uh, I felt like that was an appropriate name. So, my legs are directly above my hips. From here, I'm gonna reach up, touch my shins, and come back down. So this is a very small crunch, but what we're gonna do is build up the speed so that it's done very, very fast. You can do this to time, you can do it to reps, it's up to you, but this exercise is designed to be done fast. It's gonna build up very, very, um, it's gonna build up a lot of um, rate of force development in your core, okay? It's a very, very good exercise for having a very fast reacting core. So from here, I'm gonna reach up, I'm gonna to touch my toes, and as, as I get better at that, I build up the speed. Now guys, if you're following along with me, try and keep up. We're gonna do 30 of these high crunches as fast as we can, okay? Try and beat me. We're gonna go in three, two, one, off we go. So as you should have found there, it builds up a little bit of a burn, particularly in your upper abs, but also in your lower abs as well. You guys, like I said, do it to time, challenge yourselves, challenge your clients. It's a very fun exercise to bring out a bit of competitiveness as well. The next exercise that we're gonna do is a leg raise. You've probably seen this before. I would have thought that you'd seen it before. It's a very common and very popular one, which you're gonna pop the hands just underneath my bum or just in front rather. I don't want to sit on my hands because it changes the angle of my pelvis, which is 
not a bad thing, but it can add a little bit more complexity to it. So instead, we're gonna sit with the hands just in front of my bum. Gonna pop them on the floor, and then gonna lean back. Now, in order, for, in order for me to keep my hands there, I have to stay sitting up with my chest and with my head. If my arms start to lean this way, I flatten. So what I want to do instead is to engage my core, lift my head and shoulders, and again, like we did with the dish, keep that lower back pressed to the floor. I'm then gonna lower the legs, and then lift the legs, okay? Now what I'm looking to do here is to maximize control here. So I'm trying to increase movement at the hip, minimize movement here. What I don't want is the opposite, where we fix this and then arch the lower back. Now this isn't a problem. In fact, it's a very difficult version of a leg raise using the spine to do the movement. But for now, we're just gonna keep the spine fixed and then lift and lower the legs. Okay, if this becomes easy and your core is very strong already and you don't get any kind of lower back pain when you're doing this because you can control the movement and your body feels strong enough and confident enough to do it, then you can progress this. And one way that you can progress this is to allow the pelvis to roll back and forth. What happens there is the lower spine is gonna, anterior, is gonna flex and then extend. And what you're gonna do is use the front of your body, your abs, your six pack, your obliques, to control that um, eccentrically and concentrically. So you wanna be able to keep engaged through the core the entire time. So what I don't want is to just to flop here and have nothing going on here, and then just to kind of arch my head and lift my legs. I'm not really using this uh, as much as I could be. If that's the case, then just dial it back to here. But if this is too easy, let your lower spine move and then crunch it all in. And what you end up doing is going through a much deeper range of motion. Now that comes with uh, a need for um, greater control, which makes the exercise more difficult. So guys, play with, uh, with the kind of more basic version of that where you keep your lower back pressed and fixed. As you get more advanced, then you can allow your pelvis to move, allow your spine to move. It's gonna make the exercise a little bit more demanding. We're gonna finish up with a plank rollout. Again, this is probably something that you've come across before. We're not gonna do it from, I'm not gonna do it from my feet um, just yet. We're gonna start from the hands. And from here, this is gonna load the shoulders, but it's also gonna load the core. And all I'm gonna do is walk out as far as I can and then push back in. Now, as you can see, I'm bringing my hips with me. I'm not doing this. I'm not letting my hips stay above my knees. And the reason for that is, there's not really much load on my core when I do this. So, I wanna make sure that I'm driving my hips forward past my knees. This is gonna load up my core, it's gonna load up my abs, it's gonna make the exercise much harder. I then continue out until I get into a relatively long position. And what you should feel is quite a high demand on your core. If you want to, you can then progress that to one knee, one, uh, one foot on the floor. So you're in, like a half, you're in like a half plank. And then you do the same, and then you walk it back in. Then switch legs, so you've got one on the floor, one forward, but make sure that those hips still come with you, and then come back up. The final version is where you do it from your feet. If I fall over, please screenshot it and send it to me. So you're in that plank position, and then you're walking out into that low position, and then pushing back up. Now that is very difficult. Make sure that you're on a sticky surface. Don't be on anything slippery because you will face plant. If you do that, record it and send it to me as well because it's, uh, it's good entertainment. So guys, we had 10 exercises there. Um, this is gonna be recorded. So if you wanna go back through, practice them, take some notes, please do. Uh, I will see you guys next Tuesday on the Premier Global NASM page. I hope that was useful. I will see you next week.